Hello. Okay. My internet's a little bit wonky tonight, so hopefully we don't get booted off. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I know I did. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'll be glad actually when I'm done tonight because I'm tired. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Lori. Oops. Hi, Joni. Hi, Carolyn. Oh my gosh, I'm already yawning. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for bed early tonight. Maybe I should drink some of my tea. <laughs> I was kind of hiding it from Mabel. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Linda. Hi, Erin. Hi, Diane. Does anyone else have a bit of a glare on this? Let's see if I can get that fixed. The lighting in here is so bad. Huh. It's a bit of a glare, but that's okay. It's a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Beth. Packing and unpacking is a lot of hard work. <laughs> um, for those of you who did uh, participate in Lucy Palooza 4, I will be on tomorrow morning at 9.30. Um, I know it's kind of a, a tricky time for people during the week, but that's pretty much right after I drop Olivia off at school tomorrow and I don't uh, work tomorrow. So I uh, find it a lot easier <laughs> to do those lives when she's not here, <laughs> especially one like that where we're just kind of going to make up the um, tag folio as we go. So tonight I am putting together the P13 Goodnight album. And I did mention that I would show you guys how to sort of make the base of this album, even if you're not doing the Goodnight um, P13 kit that I have in the store available. Um, that kit does come with quite a bit. It comes with three packs of different um, tags. Hi, Corey. It comes with the six by six paper pack, the ribbon. It comes with a package of charms, the cardstock, and the chipboard that you need to make the entire folio. So basically, I'll see how far we get tonight. I'm hoping that I might actually be able to just stay on and finish it. Um, I don't anticipate we'll have a large amount of people on tonight watching because a lot of people did participate with Lucy and they're probably sick of my videos. <laughs> um, yeah. So we will get started. And like I said, um, some of you are, hello, some of you are just going to make the, the box itself and then you'll know how to make this kind of folio in the future. And that's totally fine too. Okay. So hi, Allison. The first thing we're going to do, and again, if you haven't seen this, it is so cute. Um, so I've got this front here, and I think I mentioned in my previous video when I was showing this, I messed up on the original size. So your um, front cover will look nicer than mine <laughs> um, because I had to cut mine out and re-glue it on. I don't know if you can see the vanilla outline here. Um, I didn't want to go and buy another pad of paper just to fix that. Um, so mine's a little bit messed up. And of course, the inside of mine here is also messed up because I messed up that paper cut. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I will, oops, seems like we've got some tags falling apart in here. I just wanted to run through this again. So this is so cute. This opens up one side and then the other, just like this. So this is the album that we're making tonight, okay? And then there's a little pocket in the back. You'll have to bear with me because I've not made this <laughs> in a while. Oh, it looks like some of my stickers are have moved around on me here. 
I don't know where that was actually. Anyways, um, so you have to bear with me because I've not made this in a while. And so we're going to work on it together. And similar to my other videos, what I'll do is I'm going to show you how I put together the page. Um, and I'll slowly go over each thing. But I'm actually making this with a different paper line tonight because I did make this already um, with the P13 Goodnight line. Hi, Irene. Hi, Yvonne. Oh, my nose is running a little. <laughs> it's one of those nights tonight. I'm not sure where these ones came out of. I think they came out of... I'm going to put these back in here. Oh, my gosh. There's so many things in this. Oh, I know where they came out of. In the front. Oh. Okay. Close this back up. They came out of here. There's a little pocket in the back side of this. Hi, Linda. Okay. Let's grab our chipboard. So you'll have a piece of 12 by 12 chipboard. We are going to trim our chipboard. And again, <laughs> I'm gonna remind you, I have not made this in a while, so hopefully I don't mess up. Um, but if I do, that's okay. I'm sure we all have chipboard and um, solid cardstock in our stashes. So we are going to first cut a six by six piece of chipboard. So six by six. This is going to be loud. I apologize in advance. <laughs> so, six. Oh, goodness. Six by six. Okay. So, a six by six piece. Then, we're going to also cut four pieces that measure six by one and a half. So six by one and a half, four of those. These are the pieces that make the base of our box. Hi, Linda. Oh, I think I said hi to you already. <laughs> That's how tired I am. All right, so we've done our six by six cut, and now we need six by one and a half pieces, and we need four of those. So we've already cut this to six. So I'm gonna cut it at, oops, one and a half. Oops, one and a half. One and a half. And your last piece should also be one and a half. So we've got four pieces that are six by one and a half inches and one that's six by six. That will make the base of our box. Okay. Oh, thanks, Judy. <laughs> well, I'm showing you guys how to make this in the future. And actually, I'm making a base right now with some white cardstock. And I think what I'll do is I'll save it for Christmas um, for somebody. And I'll just make them a little Christmas book or something. Because um, I'm actually going to swap over to another one that I kind of started in advance. Um, that I have the six by six papers for the bluebell and buttercups or something like that. I don't think there's any left in the store, but it's cute. Okay, so we're gonna grab set set these aside. Now we're gonna grab one of our pieces of solid um, twelve by twelve cardstock. Now you guys will have vanilla if you're working along with the Goodnight P13 album. I have white, and then of course. The album that I'm going to switch over to that I've got the box made for, but I wanted to show you guys the assembly of the box, is green. <laughs> Go figure. And it's not a color I would typically choose. Um, so the first one we're going to cut is 8 by 8. Okay, so we're going to cut a piece that is 8 by 8. So we're going to trim 8. Eight by eight. Now this is all in the same one piece of cardstock. So we trimmed eight by eight, and then we are going to use those two scrap pieces that we've just cut off. Hi Claudia, and cut those two pieces to eight by three and a half. And we need two of those pieces. 
And again, this is all with the same piece of chipboard, or sorry, cardstock. So we've already cut it at eight. And I'm just going to trim it down to three and a half. So this one needs to be trimmed down to eight by three and a half. Okay. So from that second, or sorry, that first piece of cardstock, we've got two pieces that are eight by three and a half and one piece that is eight by eight. And your scraps you don't need, so you can save them if you're going to use them for photo mats or whatever. Um, set those aside. Now you're going to grab a second sheet. Um, and you're going to cut five and seven eighths by one and a half. And we need four of these pieces. So we're going to trim the five and seven eighths first. And just so you know, if you do make a mistake with the cutting, um, if you've purchased the Goodnight P13 folio, there is an extra piece of cardstock in your package. Hi, Joyce. We are making a boxed folio. I'm showing you guys how to make the base, but then I'm going to continue on to explain how the Goodnight P13 one is put together. The Goodnight P13 one is in the online store. It comes with a ton of pieces um, of that collection, and I believe it's $49.99 or $50 anyways. Um, okay, so we need to cut this to five and seven eighths by one and a half, and we need four pieces. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then from that same piece of cardstock, we then need to trim two pieces to three quarter, three and a quarter by four. So two pieces. Now we do need to do some scoring on that, but we will do that afterwards. So four, five, Three and a quarter. Four by three and a quarter. So let's set, set the extra pieces aside from that. Okay. So from that second sheet of cardstock, we have one piece. Sorry. Four pieces cut at five and seven eighths by one and a half. And then we've got two pieces cut at three and a quarter by four. We will do some uh, scoring on that piece or those two pieces after. And then our third piece of cardstock is going to be eight and a half by eight and a half. Hi, Deborah. This is going to be the top of our box. Now, when you're making a box, you want to make sure that your lid is slightly larger so that it fits on top nicely, especially if we are filling it with all sorts of things and it's super thick to shut. So eight and a half by eight and a half. And then on that same sheet with the leftovers we are going to cut two pieces that measure eight by three and a half okay so 
would be eight and a half already. And we're going to make sure this is. So that's already three and a half. So one piece will be measured perfectly. The other piece will be three and a half by eight. Okay. So from this third piece, we've got one eight and a half by eight and a half piece. And then we've cut two pieces that measure eight by three and a half. So we will set those ones aside. This is super fun to make for anybody, um, even like as a little birthday gift or anything. And you don't even have to put um, the pages on the inside. It's super simple. Um, so for the next two pieces, we're going to cut them into six by six. Um, so in total, we will have eight pieces. So simple cutting, <laughs> eight pieces in total. So that's our next two pieces of cardstock. And then the other one's a leftover piece. So I used it to um, do my photo matting. Uh, if you guys make a boo-boo, then you have a extra piece and you can use it to fix your cut. So six by six, six by six. And then two more, six by six. And then again, this last 12 by 12 sheet is going to be <laughs> to cut into four as well. So six by six. Actually. Okay, so that's all we need to do for cutting to make the base of our box. So I'm going to set my trimmer aside. We will start cutting the uh, Goodnight um, P13 papers afterwards. I'm not going to cut mine because mine are already cut, but I do have all the measurements listed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do. Um, we're going to set aside these six by six pieces because those are our pages. What we'll do first, I think, is we will grab our piece that measures eight by eight. So this piece is eight by eight. We're going to use that first. You're going to grab your papers or your scoreboard. There's not very many people on tonight. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch me. Okay, so we're going to score. Again, if you know how I make folios, you'll be used to doing this. You're going to score one inch around each side. Okay, so I'm going to score one. One, one, one. Okay, so you can see now we've got those four corners. We're gonna miter those corners so it makes it easier for our folio to fold shut. So we're gonna snip one, two, three, four. Okay. You're watching first, Irene. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. So let's set that aside. We'll, we'll prep all of our scoring. So this is going to be the base of our box that we're going to cover. So let's set that aside for now. And then we're going to grab one of our three and a half by eight pieces, but I'm just going to double check for you guys to make sure I'm not messing that up. So eight by three and a half, you should have four of those. Now again, you're going to score one inch around. Okay, and again, we're going to miter the corners. And there are four of those pieces. Those are the four parts, four sides of our box. So we're going to cover all of those. Now, there are simpler ways to um, 
construct a box. The way that I show you how to do the lid, you could also make the base like that. But um, because our folio has so many pages and it's full of, it's pretty heavy, um, it's much better if we have a solid base with the cardstock or chipboard, sorry. Um, so we're just gonna assemble it this way. So there's another one of our spine covers. Let's set that aside. Do the next piece again, three and a half by eight. We've got four of those, scoring one inch all the way around and lightering the corners. I could put folios together in my sleep. <laughs> I have already thought of what I'm doing for Lucy 5 because um, things have to be ordered pretty early uh, in order to get like the quantities that we need. So I'm really excited about that. Um, hopefully you guys like it. I like it already. It's kind of shaping up to be pretty cool. I'll probably <laughs> finish thinking it out over the next week or so. All right, so I'm going to grab another eight and a half by three piece. Eight and a half, three and a half. my next one i'm not sharing irene but i am the folio um the little tag album that i'm making tomorrow is definitely going to be um summer themed you guys saw it already yes we're tired i'm tired linda <laughs> hi heather Yes, so I'm, I'm not telling you what my next Lucy is, that's for sure. All right, so we've got one more spine to make up. Oh, thank you, Erin. <laughs> Again, our eight by, I think it's an eight and a half last time, but it's eight by three and a half, our last spine piece for going to score one inch around all four sides and light of the corners. I sound like a broken record, but that's how we put them all together. <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see the finished folios. I saw a few of the Lucy 4 folios. Hopefully I see some more popping up. Lucy 5 marks like one year of doing Lucy's, which is amazing. I can't even believe I've been doing it for one year. Well, over one year. And I don't know if I've told you the story. But, like I literally just walked into the store and I had never been to Unique before. And I spoke with Dan and I just kind of liked the vibe. And then I kept going and making things. <laughs> and then I asked one day, if you guys need some help doing some videos, I wouldn't mind. And that's sort of just how it happened. So there's our last spine piece. So I'm just going to go back to those little pieces that we had trimmed um, that we need to score. Now, for the life of me, I can't remember why. Um... Just let me look at our album again. I just can't remember why we need to score. Oh, yes, I do. We're making an accordion for our pages to clip to. So these two pieces that are three and a quarter by four, what we're going to do is we're going to score every quarter inch along the short side of the, hang on a second. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so along the shorter side, so this is the um, three and a quarter inch side, we're going to score at quarter inch increments all the way along. This is what's going to create our like accordion spine where we're going to attach our pages. So a quarter, half, <laughs> Three quarters, one, one quarter, half, <laughs> three quarters, two, a quarter, one and a half, three quarters, three. So you should have 12 score lines on that. I'm just going to set that aside and we're going to do the same thing to that other piece that measures the same 
which again is three and a quarter by four, and we're going to score along the short side every quarter inch, and that makes 12 score lines. Oops, I missed that one a little bit. Yeah, we're definitely all tired. My cats are so tired. I should show you guys a picture of Finny. He literally, like, he was in the little cat hammock upside down with his legs up in the air on his back. He's just, like, out cold. And they've been sleeping nonstop since. Okay, so we've got two of these now with the score lines every quarter inch. We're going to set those aside. Those are for our pages, like I said. Now, we've got... Four pieces that are, I think these are the five and seven eighths by one and a half. We're going to set those ones aside for now. And then again, the only other pages are these six by six pieces. So we're going to leave those aside as well. So this is our eight and a half by eight and a half inch square. Again, we're going to score one inch around. So score one inch around. So we're done our scoring now. Okay, so this first, well, we're done our scoring for now. I think I did a couple of pockets in our book, but we'll do the scoring for those after. I'm just gonna grab a sip of my tea. Wilma says, you're, you're hoping to finish the Lucy Four Folio on Saturday, stretching out the fun. I have to finish Sandra's. I, I made her, um, flip book and I just have to finish putting in the embellishments and I have to make Heather's mixed media piece. I may do that tomorrow after I do the tag uh, folio with you guys. I'm not too sure. Okay, so this is our top of our box. This is the eight and a half by eight and a half piece. So let's fold all these edges inward. I'm just gonna grab my phone folder. I have it hidden now. So the cat's decided it's also their territory, I guess. <laughs> it's a very simple way to make a box lid. Oh, good, Lori. I'm glad you're looking forward to starting the projects. This is the first Lucy that I've actually finished all the projects. Um, I, like I said, I only have one left to do. Well, I cheated. Betty gave me her hot air balloon. <laughs> so it's on my shelf. Um, yeah. Sarah, I'm actually, I've taken a bit of time off because, you know, it's just been a lot with COVID and in my position, so I just needed to have a break. So that's, I'm off right now. So I'm just catching up on some of these projects that I wanted to, to do with you guys. Okay, so this lid, we've got our score lines done and we've folded them all inward. Now, I don't want you guys to make a mistake with the cutting of this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to trim up to I'm going to try and see if I can show you up to one spot here so that we have a little bit of a flap so that that's going to be how we attach that side. Okay. If that makes sense. <laughs> so that's a bit of a flap. Now the next one here, we're going to flip around. And again, we're always going to cut that left side, not the right, because then we won't have anything to attach to. So again, I'm going to trim that left side. So that leaves a little flap for us to attach our lid sides together. And again, here, it is nice of her, isn't it, Lori? <laughs> we all end up with two projects. So I actually, I gave my um, Hello Spring folio to Sandra to finish up. That's why I didn't put anything in it while I was doing it. She's going to finish it up. So again, I'm only going to trim on that left side. So now I've got these little flaps here. Okay. So how we're gonna do this is we're actually just gonna fold this inward and that makes our box lid. 
okay? So I actually just use glue to glue these edges together. You could also reinforce with tape. I didn't find it was a huge deal because once we put this together, I covered um, with pattern paper each of these sides and the bottom. So you're gonna reinforce it with more glue and paper anyways. Um, so I put glue on the inside of this little flap on each side and I just folded this up. Okay, I don't know if that's fuzzy for you guys. So I folded it on the inside so that we don't see that little seam or the edge. Now you can see here I'm a little bit off, so I will probably just trim that up when we're done assembling this lid. So again, I'm going to glue on the inside here. and just hold that shut. And we'll do that on all four sides. And that makes our lid, we're done our lid. That's just so crazy. This is the easiest project to make, I promise. Okay, and this is our last piece. So again, like I mentioned, just make sure when you're making any sort of box, it's very easy to adjust the measurements to make a smaller one, um, that you make your lid slightly larger so that it fits on properly. Because if you make it smaller, it won't fit. That's what I did the first time by accident. I wasn't thinking. Um, <laughs> so I had to make a whole new box, like I said. So I had one side that was a little bit off. So I'm gonna just trim this guy up a wee bit. There. So now we've got our box lid, okay? Hopefully that's simple enough for you guys to follow. I've got an awful glare here, but anyways, there's our lid and I will set that aside. Now for the fun part, like assembling a folio, let's grab our piece of chipboard and our eight by eight piece of cardstock. I'm gonna grab my tape um i'll use a thinner tape so i'm going to reinforce with tape and glue just to glue the chipboard on i always do that you know what i'm gonna actually tape all my spines right now too while i've got the tape out usually my cats are crazy at this time of night and they're both just zonked. I sh oh, Finny looks so cute right now. He's just sleeping on my bed. Maybe it's underneath me on my at my feet. Um, throughout the weekend, uh, Sammy was like ruling the roost at Heather's. So um, the other cats were afraid of her. Well, Mabel and Scruff aren't necessarily afraid of her. They would take her on. If they tried. They could try to take her on anyways. But um, Finny is such a chicken cat. He just ran ran the other way. Um, but we couldn't find the baby at one point so we looked and all three of them are like snuggled up underneath the bed where i was sleeping um so cute and he's like uh scruff is a little tormentor he wants to play he's a kitten so he was really enjoying mabel because mabel was just giving it right back to him <laughs> so cute together he's probably missing them or he's like bugging dan and heather a lot today all right so i'm gonna glue and tape this down and it's a square we don't have to worry about where we're oops a little bit off here with my measurements there we go so we put that down and now i'm going to glue my flaps all on again i always glue along the inside seam first so that um where that fold is and i kind of go like this before i Put it down where that fold is gets a little bit soft so it doesn't rip when you're folding around your chipboard okay you guys can yell at me if i sound like a broken record with some of these tips i probably do you never know who's new and watching though All right, so we fold this up and then we're going to fold our last 
bit up. Oops. Okay, so there's our base to our box. I will set that aside. And I'm going to work on one of our spines. So the only difference to these spines I will show you is that we are only going to glue three of the sides to the center. So, and the reason for that is that we're going to attach one of our inside pieces to our box base um, so that it flaps open flat. You'll see when we assemble it um, what I mean by that. So again, we're going to do just one long side and two short sides. We are going to leave that third long side. Side, not slide. <laughs> You guys have any plans for this week? You know what I've been doing? Diamond dots. Those crafts, oh, diamond painting. I don't know what exactly it's called. Heather showed me hers and then I was like, ooh, that's kind of fun. And Heather had bought Olivia one and I was kind of like, well, not something I would maybe do. And then Olivia dropped a whole bunch of the little diamond dots on the ground. So then I was like, oh shoot. So I helped her pick them up and I thought, well, I'll vacuum up the extras, so I wanted to help her put the, all the, the bleh, all of that color on so that I didn't vacuum up any that she would need. But after I helped her, I just kept doing it. I was addicted to it. <laughs> I had gotten her another one for Christmas. It's of two cats, which is really cute. She really wants to get that one done, but she needs to finish her other one first. She's only got a little bit left, but I started the sunflower one tonight. It's actually, it's so addicting. I didn't, I didn't think I would like it, but it's fun. I couldn't do like a big one. Heather has like a mass, she has a few massive ones, but oh my gosh, I couldn't do it that big. Mine is like small. I think it's like 12 by nine or something like that. Okay. So again, all three of these uh, spines are assembled the same way. So we leave one of the long ends open. So Corey says, um, Oh, Carolyn, you're hoping to finish your grandson's cross stitch this weekend. Cool. What is the cross stitch of? That's one thing I'm not the best at. I've done like the cross stitch on wood pieces, uh, which I like, but counted cross stitch on like eight o'clock. I don't know. I'm not very good at it. Um, I like embroidery though. Corey says you're hoping to start some Lucy Four stuff. You watched all weekend. Oh no, that's so awful, Corey. I'm sorry to hear that. It's so sad when our pet passes away. They're like our kids. Oh. Especially sudden suddenly. I don't know if you have kids or not, Corey. Do you have kids? I'm sure if you do, they're having a really rough time too. Yes, Wilma, I get my chipboard at Unique. I think it's about $1.20 a page. Maybe it's less. I can't exactly remember. Um, I just bought 25 pieces because I go through it, through it so much. Um, if you are on a budget, you can use cereal boxes and stuff like that. But this chipboard is a little bit heavier. Star Wars Mandalorian's Mask. Interesting. Oh, yeah, it's tough. I'm sure they're having a rough time too. Aw. Okay. Oops. Why is this piece shorter? Hang on a second. I must have put this one wrong. Eight and a half. Hang on a second. Oops. Yep, I must have missed the cut on this one for some reason. Okay, so I'm going to cut another piece of this one out. Um, 
Aw, that's too bad, Corey. So that's why I always have extra card stuff. Wasn't paying attention to my cut. So this needs to be eight by three and a half. I heard that, Lori. I heard you were supposed to be getting a lot of snow. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to fix that sheet. Oh, wait. Okay, back on track. I'm gonna re-glue this. Glue dries so nicely and quickly. Try this again. So again, only one long side and then the two short sides get folded in. Yes, <laughs> good excuse to hibernate and craft, yes. Exactly. I might be super tired after tomorrow, after we finish um, that tag. I can't believe that we, none of us did anything with the tag punch. I think we were just so um, absorbed in like the projects we were doing. I think I meant to do it with, I had a little bit of extra pieces, but because it was such a big project, um, I wanted to make sure that if you guys needed to cut something out again, that you had the pieces. So I didn't make tags for that reason. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our four spine pieces. We're going to flip them all over and we're going to put um, a strip of tape on the very left side of those spines um, where that flap is that we did not glue. Where did I put my tape? Here we go. Okay, so I've put tape on the one side of the flap that we've not glued on each of these spine pieces. So let's take our base piece, and this is the trick I've taught everybody before. We're going to fold up that piece that's not glued so that we, you're gonna try folding it both ways just so it's it's got um, malleable, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> got nice and uh, flimsy <laughs> to put on here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put some glue on the other side where this tape is we're going to line up our spine piece with our chipboard base, and we're going to flip that over and glue it flat down. And we're going to do that with all four sides. This is the base um, of all my folios. Make sure when you're gluing that you don't glue, glue too close to this corner here, um, or your glue will start to seep out the edges. Now, the trick to this is I actually hold this back and I line it up as close as I can, and then I flip this over flat. Okay. And then, if you look here, we've got a really nice clean seam. Okay, so we're gonna do that with all four sides. So again, we're just gonna move that extra piece back and forth a little so it's nice and I don't know what the word is. I said flimsy, loose, I don't know. So it's nice and folded, scored both ways. <laughs> and again, we're going to line this guy up the best that we can, as tight as we can against it, and we're gonna flip that over. Okay, so again, now we've got two sides to our box finished. 
I really wish I didn't have a glare like that. I asked Heather where she gets her other lights, so I'm going to see if that helps, having another light on my desk. There is a light on this camera, but it's, um, it doesn't make a difference when we put it on. Flexible. Yes, that's a good word for eight things. All right, so again, we're going to butt that right up against that edge and flip it over. We've got a really nice clean edge. And then we're going to finish off our last one here. We're almost done the base of our box. It's very simple. Whoops, I forgot to do my folding. Okay. All right, again, butt that up as close as we can, and we're going to flip that over. Okay. So we've got the base of our box almost done. So you can see we've got all four edges. And again, you could have assembled our box much like our lid. However, because we're adding so many heavy pages to this, I wanted to make sure that it was really sturdy. Um, and durable. So that's why I use chipboard. So you'll see here that our lid fits perfectly on our box. It is a little bit big right now um, when you look at it, but once we have it full, it fits tight, believe me. Oh, Corey, your dog is so beautiful. I just saw that comment that Lori had asked. Aw. Okay, so now we're going to take um, the four pieces that we have that measure five and seven eighths I believe by one and a half yes and we're going to use these just to cover up these little seams here so we're going to do that on all four sides I mentioned before um, what I like to do for these is take my bone folder and just run along and kind of lightly score where that seam is going to be it helps when we're adhering the sides excuse me I am going to use tape and glue for this and I'm going to grab my thicker tape. I'm going to grab my thicker tape. There we go. I'm almost out of this one. Oops. Okay, so we put tape on all four of these seam covers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this kind of centered and I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to run in that crease the best that I can. You can see I'm kind of going a little bit wonky right now. Okay, then I'm going to peel that tape off and I'm going to use my glue and tape to adhere these down. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes because you can get some um, bubbling. So what I like to do is kind of put one side down first and then the other. So we're going to center this. So we put the one side down. I run my bone folder through. And then I'm going to fold this side over. It kind of helps with that buckling. And if you have a little bit of buckling, because we've put tape and glue, um, it's much easier just to kind of peel off quick to fix it. So I don't know if you can see, but there's absolutely no buckling there. And I'll show you again the trick I use to do that on my next one that we cover up here. So again, we're going to kind of eyeball this up in the middle, run our bone folder down to make a crease score line. And then we're going to add our glue. And like I said, I kind of push down, I'm going to line up that score line again the best that I can. And I push down one side and then I fold, whoops, I kind of fold down the other side so that it lines up better. Oh, and we got buckling there. But again, like I said, because we put tape and glue, 
not a big deal. We run our bone folder through. And then we fold that over. There we go. Got rid of that buckling. It takes a little bit to get used to not having that. Got a little bit of a bubble there, but that's okay. Oh, hit me. Alrighty, so I'm going to put that down, run my bone folder in there, and then fold that side over. There we go. All right, then our last side here. All right, score that down and then flip it over. And then we've got a nice neat, this one's good. And it's gonna put a little bit more glue there. There we go. Okay, so then we've got the base of our box all covered and done. So simple. Um, The next part we're going to do, let me just double check how I put together Okay, so I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to flip over to my other one that I've partially assembled. Um, I'm going to set this one aside. I will show you how to fold these after, um, but we actually cover these four pieces first before we put our accordion folds for our page pieces down. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to skip over to the one that I've already assembled that I'm going to put paper in. I'm going to save this one for Christmas for someone, so I'm not going to cover it quite yet. Um, hopefully it doesn't mess you up with the colors or anything. Okay. So, <laughs> this is like a deep green color, it's so cute. So I've got my uh, base already assembled and I'm using this Bluebells and Buttercups. Oh my gosh, this light is just, let's just give it a second and see if it zones in here. Slowly but surely. <laughs> I don't know if having the light on will help. So this is a Bluebells and Buttercups line. That light does not help. It's so goofy. So what we'll do is I'll start covering my pages and I'll give you the measurements as I go and I'll go back to um, the good night E13 folio 2 as we go. So for our front cover, let's do the front cover first. For our front cover of the P13 Goodnight Folio, I took, why is that so fuzzy? Hang on guys, let me just get that clear. Give it a minute. The camera keeps moving, that's why. Okay, so I took one of the polka dotted pieces 
and you're gonna leave it as six by six and you're going to glue that right down on your sheet. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my pieces here. I haven't quite decided what I was going to do on this. So you'll see here that the six by six will pretty much cover it up with just a little bit of a line around it. Okay. And actually, you know what? I think it might be too confusing if I go back and forth between the projects. So I think what I'll do is I, I'll write out the measurements for the P13 as I go here. And then you guys will know like the sizes of your page measurements too. So in um, the P13 books, what you're going to do is, and I think there is a direct um, instruction sheet too in your package that tells you what you're cutting of which. So um, the inner sides of the bottom box, which is, this cloud pattern paper here, you are going to cut four pieces, one for each of those edges at five and three quarter by one and a quarter. And you need four of those. And that's for the inner sides of bottom box. Okay, so that's for the inner sides of the bottom of your box. So for those of you who are just working along and you're doing it for another project, that's the measurement that you're going to do um, the inside pieces there. Okay, and again, P13 is this uh, cute cloud and star patterned paper. Okay. Now the next one I had already mentioned, the polka dotted, um, multicolored polka dot paper, you're going to leave at six by six for front cover. Okay. For, um, the outside pieces of the lid, the top outside piece for the P13 album, again, we use this multicolored dot paper. And for those measurements, and you need four pieces, you need six by three quarters of an inch. Four pieces for outer, top lid top lid that doesn't make sense <laughs> top lid um okay when you cut this piece there will be a little bit left over what you're going to do with that leftover piece is you will score a quarter inch on two short sides and one long. You'll miter those corners and you're going to make a pocket with that leftover piece that will be added to the very back of your folio, okay? So you'll set that aside. Okay, so those are our measurements so far. I know you guys, um, a lot of you will be watching along afterwards. So what I'll do is I'll leave these on for a minute, but I know you can pause and go as you go. And I think what I'll do is walk through the whole cutting tonight because it's, it's actually pretty simple. Now, um, the outer sides of the bottom box is this star paper, the light blue. So outer 
sides of your bottom box. You're going to cut four pieces and they will measure at five and three quarters by one and one quarter. Again, you're going to adhere those on that outside of your bottom box, okay? And that's the light blue star paper with the uh, Goodnight P13 line. We're almost on our cutting for this, which is crazy because all the page pieces are very simple because they're all six by six. Um, that's why I thought I would just go over this with you guys fairly quickly and then I'll walk through the rest of this book. Um, so six by three quarters. So, oops, the inside lid, why is there such a glare? It drives me nuts. Okay. The inside of your box is with the light pink paper. It is not plaid like I'm showing here because I messed up on the cuts. I had, I just used what I had in, in stock in my stash that would kind of match. Um, so it's a light pink color. You'll leave the base at six by six. Oops. And then you'll take a second piece of that same color and you'll cut four pieces measuring six by three quarters and you'll cover all four of these inside um, lid sides. Okay, six by three, four. Four pieces inside lid sides. Six by six inside lid. Okay, so that's the measurements for that. Now, with the remaining piece of this first one here that you cut, the six by three quarters, let me just do a second sticky note here. You are going to trim to two and three quarter by three, then score a quarter inch on two short sides, one long. And that's gonna make some pockets in your album. Okay. So when you cut the six by three quarter, the four pieces, with the extra piece you're gonna cut um, two pieces measuring two and three quarters by three. Two pockets. Does that makes sense, hopefully. <laughs> um, and then that's it for that. All the rest of the inside pieces are going to measure all inside papers measure five and three quarter inch squares. So simple. Okay. So there, for those of you who are doing like the folio with whatever papers that you have, that's how you do that part. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to set this aside because those are all of our measurements. And I'll maybe go back to that white piece. And I'm going to show you how to fold up our accordion pieces and how they fold inward. Okay. And how our pages attach. So I would cover all four of these sides first, <laughs> and then I would, um, excuse me, I would um, put my spines in. So we're gonna fold these one way and then the next when we're folding. And this will help us make, like I said, I keep saying it, an accordion spine. And we will tape every other. Oops. Okay. 
Let me just fold this out, actually. Let me just double check something, because I might have folded this a little bit differently than I usually do. And I did. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a flat piece here. So this is how our base attaches. Then we're going to fold it up like this and have another flat piece. Then we will have, if I fold it first and then show you, it's a little bit easier. So hard to explain some of these technical terms sometimes. Oops. Let me just fold this down here. So basically you're going to do a little mountain and then you're going to have a flat section. Then you're going to do a little mountain and you're going to have a flat section so that we are going to adhere all those flat sections to our side and then we'll adhere the papers to the mountain sections. Okay, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to fold the next one up there. Would help if I had better lights in here. <laughs> as soon as I have this folded properly, I'll show you guys and then it'll make more sense for sure. Okay. Okay. I've got my folding done. I'm just going to fold these all together so that you can see how they get done. I'm just going to do an extra score line so that you can really see where they land. Okay. So when we do these page pieces, let me just fold them back the other way. We're going to fold them like this. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll let it focus. So that's how we're going to fold our pieces so that these flat sides, we're going to put tape on and stick them close together. And then these um, pieces that are sticking out is where we're going to attach our paper. So what I've done on mine is I've added tape to the back side of this. You can see where all of our little mountains are. Um, and then I added glue as well, and I glued it down to one of these spines. And then I glued the other one in the spine directly opposite to it. So I'm just gonna do that. Now I use tape and glue because I wanted to make sure that it was really nice and solid. So we'll add our tape to those little flat sections. I know there's only about nine people on. I figured that it would be really slow tonight. Kind of hard to do a video when there's not that many people watching. Hopefully you guys make this in your own time and then share it though to the page. I was supposed to do this last week, but it was just really, it was a crazy Monday. So I'm kind of rushing to, not rushing, but I'm just going through this a little bit quicker than I had anticipated because it was for a two week class. All right. So you can see I've added tape along all those flat sections of our fold and I keep showing you just so that you can see how they're folded and hopefully it's not too confusing for you. Oh, thanks Lori. So I'm going to peel all that tape off and then before I, oops, before I added it down, I also added some glue between each of those mountains so that those um, pieces stuck straight together. Oh gosh, I don't have any, my nails aren't that long to peel these off.
Okay, so what I do is I put some glue in between these little mountains and I just held it shut for a minute. You could use a bulldog clip too, just to help reinforce it before we shut those, before we glue them down. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the next one. And then we've got our last piece here. Again, I just glue in between those mountains so that they kind of stick together a little bit better. Okay, then, oops, that one's not sticking. Then I just put some glue along each of these pieces and stuck it straight to my spine. Oops. So I measured it around the middle. Ish, as close as I could. And then I stuck that down like this. Okay, so just like that. So that's how I adhere my page pieces. So you'll see that there, that's how it looks. Okay, now you'll do the same. I'm not gonna show you again because you can rewatch that. But you're going to do the same with the other piece and you're going to adhere that accordion spine directly across to the other side. Okay. Um, now I know I only have about eight people here, but I will walk through the P13 album so you know what pages are where because I mean it's I've only been on for an hour and I might as well just finish it tonight. It'll only take me about half an hour. Um, yeah, like I said, you don't have to cover these spines before you add your um, accordion spine where your pages go, but I like to because I like to have that part covered. Um, then what you're going to do is you're just going to take all of your page pieces that you cut out and you're going to glue them um, on each of these spines. Now I did them on the front. So I started gluing them on the front of each side. And you only need one and you'll see on the back you'll see that little seam that doesn't matter because you're going to cover it with one of your five and three quarter inch square papers so you won't see that anyways okay so you'll add one two three four of your page pieces there and then when you added their other your other spine here you're going to add four of the pages there and then when you close your binder or your folio you're going to close one page and then the other and then it's going to close all up and you can put your lid on. Okay, so that's how you guys make the folio in general. <laughs> now I'm going to go over the P13 one. All right, so on the back of our folio, we've got one of the light pink pieces, and I did leave it at six by six. When you guys are assembling these folios, what you're going to do is you're going to take your ribbon before you adhere your back piece, you're going to take your ribbon and you're going to run it underneath and add some tape. Um, that's going to be your closure. So you're going to use the ribbon to close your box on the top. For the P13 album, you'll see in your um, six by six photo packs, the back or paper packs, the back and the front have some um, ephemera pieces. I did fussy cut them out. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but I have added in some of those fussy cut pieces um, throughout the folio. Um, actually, I'm kind of lying because I use my scan and cut. <laughs> if you have a scan and cut, I wouldn't recommend it though because it did wreck quite a few of the pieces. It would be better if you did fussy cut them. So I added this little um, piece with the line so I could write who it was for and the little bear on the top. Now for, now I don't, I don't have these. Let's do the left side first and then we'll go to the right side. When I cut these particular page pieces with the P13 line, I did, because they're five and three quarter inch squares, I did make sure that I evenly cut around so that I didn't miss any of the image because I really like the images that this one has. Um, there's a couple of the pages that are like this, okay? So I did add a two by three photo mat here with Dreamland and Dream Big stickers. And I added um, this from the stickers 
as well with some foam tape. Super cute. There's my super cute. <laughs> um, for the next page, I added the paper with the really cute <laughs> clouds and the sleeping animals. And I added, I think this one is a four by uh, five by three. Yes, I added a five by three photo mat here. And I added the time to dream sticker with some foam tape. And this is one of the fussy cut moons. Okay. This again is one of the pale pink polka dot papers. Like I said, all of these page pieces are five and three quarter inch squares. So I've trimmed them all up. I did set aside all my extra pieces and I'll show you where I use them at the end. This again is one of the fussy cut pieces and so are these that are from the back and front covers. This is a four by four photo mat and then Life Begins at Night is one of the stickers. I just love this album, it's so pretty. This is again, one of those pages that I was very careful at cutting because I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut off any of the image. I have a three by three photo mat with a sticker moon that I've added with some foam tape and then the full moon sticker in the corner. One of the striped pages, I've added two two by three photo mats with the sh sticker and the rest sticker. And then this is one of the ephemera pieces that say sweet dream. This is the blue star paper with a three by three photo mat. I've added the stickers stars can't shine without darkness and you are my star. And then I've added two stickers flat on my page here. Oh, that's kind of fuzzy. Sorry, guys. And then I've added this sticker with some foam tape in the corner. I'm just gonna see if it goes in the focus without my hands in the way. Darn thing. I don't know why it's doing that so much. Let's see if that helps. There we go. I don't know, hopefully it stays focused. The next page is this polka dot page with a three by four photo mat, little star sticker. I've got this star ephemera piece added with some foam tape. I've got this little flag from our pieces that says kisses. And then again, a piece of ephemera with some foam tape. On this page, I've got the cloud background with a three by five photo mat, one of these little fussy cut stars, one of the tags. I did add eyelets to all my tags and a little bit of um, twine here. I put reach for the stars and moon child for the stickers. Whoops, my camera's going down. <laughs> okay. And then that brings us to our back page. On our very back page, I used this piece of paper with all of the characters on it. And then with the leftover polka dot piece that we created a pocket with from the sides of our lid, I put there with a bunny ephemera piece added with foam tape, and then It's Cuddle Time and Teddy Bear stickers. Now I did cut, a, because there's so many stickers and pieces with this kit, I wanted to use them all up. I don't like to have anything left over. Um, so I cut a whole bunch of photo mats that fit in there at various sizes, and I added all my leftover stickers to those. So you'll see here, I wish it wasn't, I wish it wasn't, it was focusing better. Let me just see. Just keep sliding, silly thing. I'm gonna have to figure out how to tighten it. Dan's gonna have to help me with this. Anyways, I've added all of these photo mats in here with all of the extra stickers. I'm just gonna wait a minute because I don't want it to be fuzzy when I'm showing you guys. There we go. 
So you can add your stickers wherever you like, but I wanted to use them all up, so I added all the photo mats for the back. Now, some of these I, I wrecked. I must have been opening it too much. So let's start at the beginning of the right side, okay? So we've got these characters that are all playing. We've got a three by three photo mat with the sticker bedtime story and then three of the circular stickers added with foam tape. On the back side, we've got the light pink star sheet with a four by four photo mat with stickers, embrace your dreams and dream a little dream of me. And this, I, this was not here. I can't remember where this piece was, maybe over here. Oh, actually, that sticker fell off on me. Okay, um, and this ephemera piece with the bear, I've added with foam tape. On this page, oh, I just love the back of this paper, has all the little element pieces. And I've added a four by three photo mat with one of the tags, um, flags, I think, actually. I cut off the top that had the little hole on some of these and added them as flags. I've got this cute little bear with the eyelet and some twine, and then this little circular sticker. On this page, again, one of those nice um, pages that have all of the toys. This one has a teepee, it's so cute. Um, a two by three photo mat, the sticker sleepy head, and then this bare piece of ephemera added with foam tape. Oh, that's where that bear came from. <laughs> oh my goodness, he came out from there. I've opened this way too many times. Okay, this is like my favorite page. So I've got the striped paper in the background, Always Kiss Me Goodnight, uh, three by three photo mat, and then I matched up these stickers to the color of the stripe, which I loved, with some foam tape. This one here, they're kind of coming off, I need to add some glue. Maybe when you add your stickers down, make sure that you add some glue. This is the pale pink uh, polka dot backdrop with a four by four photo mat. I love you to the moon and back sticker. And then I use the flag stickers with some twine along the top. Again, one of these backdrops with the playroom. I've added a two by three photo mat and then one of the uh, flags. I did use an eyelet for this and some twine. And then here's our last page. I used that element backdrop, a four by three photo mat, time to cuddle sticker, sweet dream sticker, and then I use these three rectangular stickers with some foam tape. And then again, when you close this up, make sure I close it up one page and then the other, just so that you're opening up kind of like back and forth. I like that element of it, whoops. Okay, so there's how that part looks. And I think I'll go over again the top of our box. So again, it's the pale pink um, polka dot paper inside here, that six by six. And then like I said, we had covered the inside edges with six by I think three quarter inch pieces. And then I made a tiny little pocket here. I added a few of our extra tags. I added this sticker with foam tape, these three sticker, four stickers with foam tape, Nighty Night and Dreamer. And then the front of our album, you will see um, there is the front cover of your paper pack has this darker teal cir um, circular pattern paper. I actually cut a piece that measures three and a three and three quarters by two and three quarters. Let me just write that down so you can see. Three and three quarters by two and three quarters. I'm, I scored along the two short sides and one long side and I made this pocket for the front. Now I then took this piece, this piece, and these two stars are fussy cut from our album the six by six covers. 
Then I have Good Night, Sleep Tight, Starry Sky, Love, and Kiss stickers right on our page. And then I've got this ephemera piece under here with the house and the bunny. And then I've got a sticker um, added with some foam tape here. Now all of, all of the tags that I added in here, I've actually added our charms right to the tags. I was trying to figure out a way to add them. So that's the way I added them for this one. I do like that. Um, I don't know in the future if I would put a pocket <laughs> on the front where my ribbons tie up because it kind of goes right, right in front of my, here, I'll show you. This is so tight in here. It's hard to close up. There's so much fun, so many fun pages. So this goes right across our center here. So I don't know if I would do a pocket there again. Um, I would probably do something a little more off center. Anyways, if any of this does not make sense to you, please send um, Unique a message or Heather an email and I can touch base with you. Um, hopefully my instructions made sense and you guys can make one of these boxed albums in the future. Uh, again, if you need any help, we're always there to help you. Um, there's lots of fun papers in the store to choose from, tons of 6 by 6 albums. Um, I used this entire album and all the pieces. There was nothing left over, which was great. Um, actually, I should say, one of the extra pieces that I had from one of my strips, the light blue stars, I did um, put across here. But again, that was mainly because I made that mistake with my um, cutting at the beginning when I did my first lid. So you don't have to add that, but yeah. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of the week. I will see some of you tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning when I pop on in the Lucy Palooza 4 group. I will be making a tag folio. I'm just going to, to wing it, but I think it'll turn out really awesome. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Otherwise, this week on the Unique page, Sandra will be on a Wednesday. Dan will be on on Thursday. And yeah. Hopefully you guys have a great night. Thanks for sticking with me if you guys did stay on.